a dat le tău papice de pires. <laughs> This is the Isle of Staffa, famous for Fingal's Caves, and you can see this wonderful columnar basalt formation. We're looking at a pod of common dolphin. Here they are, playing like children. I, I've never seen them in quite this numbers before. I mean, there must be 30, 40, or even 50 of them around us. My name is Jeremy Norman. I'm the principal owner of Soho Gyms. And before that, I was started the world-famous Heaven Nightclub. I'm Derek Frost, and professionally, I used to be an interior designer. I met Derek when he was 25 and I was 29, and we've been together ever since. I heard on the radio someone saying that spring travels up through Britain at the pace of a walking man. And I thought that was an intensely romantic notion. Every summer, Derek and Jeremy charter Kalani, an 80-foot twin-screw diesel motor yacht. Usually, they cruise the Mediterranean. This journey will be different. They'll start at the very tip of England, which is the Scilly Isles. And from there, they'll go up the Bristol Channel to South Wales. And from South Wales, right around the coast of Wales, across the Irish Sea to Northern Ireland. Then, up the coast of Northern Ireland, right to the very top, to Raitland Island, and then across to the Mull of Kintyre. They'll then proceed up the Inner Hebrides to Ullapool, taking in all the famous islands, and then from Ullapool to the Outer Hebrides, and from there on to St Kilda, hopefully if they make it. Previously, we're on the uninhabited small island, and it uh, is an early Christian community, the 5th to 8th centuries AD. So this may well be a subsidiary community uh, from the Ionian community. Uh, we're just off the island of Lismore, in Loch Linney. And that little island would just do me fine. And this is where Derek and I came some 15 years ago on an intensely romantic weekend in September. We pick up where we left off, with Kalani anchored near the port of Tobermory on the Isle of Mull. Tim and Dimmy can't miss an opportunity to tease Ren. Always a bad you from afar. <laughs> that little bump is in the penis. <laughs> yeah. The boys are giving Ren his first ever water skiing lesson. Okay, Ren. A couple of things, fast or slow, obviously you know. That means turn, when I do that, that means going to the centre of the wake, OK? About right, so I need to bit loose. Make sure you keep your arms straight, OK? Knees bent. It's the most important thing. OK, I'll come round again. No, it's all right, they're right. OK, he's got it. You need to step up a little bit more. So you need to be a tight ball, then you need to roll forwards, yeah. and that will stop the pressure, because currently what's happening, you're putting your skis too far apart, and you're leaning back. That's good. Three, two, one. Three. So what you need to do is let the, bot let the ski boat do all the work, right, at the moment, you're trying to pull with your arms, OK? And what's that going to do? That's going to push your pressure back, put your legs apart, and you're going to go. So keep your arms straight, then rock forwards as the boat comes up. Arms straight, and three. Go 
way you did it, but you just bend your arms. You're gonna have another go. Yeah, yeah. You ready? Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay, and here we go. Let's together. It's not as easy as it looks. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, you got Kalani, so hey, Jim's go ahead. Yeah, Rob, uh, there's a guy here picking up this fish farms and lobster pots, and uh, I think our anchor's uh, over a lot of them, so I think we're going to have to get back to the boat, because we're going to have to lift the anchor and move away from here, Ever. Yeah, OK, roger that. We'll come in now, Ever. Yep. With the lesson abandoned, they head back to Kalani. Ren is quietly pleased. Yeah, he's not suggesting we move necessarily. He just says if he can, like, we can find a way with him just to. Uh, we give to a, let him we out. give a lot of slack on the stern line and go forward. And this time, this will relax the chain, and he think he might just be able to take it. I'll give it a go. You got the last one. With Rob and the Soho Gems there to help, the lobster pots are soon retrieved. Derek and Jeremy, along with their friend John Alexander and his son Bertie, make a run to Togamori for more provisions. It's a bank holiday weekend, so they buy extra to tide them over. It's a beautiful town, famous for its colourful waterfront stores and restaurants. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. They leave under the dazzling sun and head out towards the Hebridean Sea. Gull Lighthouse is a reassuring sight as it stands guard over the western exit of the sound. Jeremy spots Glengorm Castle, built in 1860 in typical Scots baronial style. It's now operated as a bed and breakfast. As they head out into more open waters, the vistas widen. They head south to the Isle of Staffa. John and Bertie make the most of the sunshine.
they anchor in the cove between the islands of Gometra and Ulva. To save time, they will make the remainder of the journey to Staffa in the Rib. The island rises out of the sea like a giant monumental sculpture. Jeremy is particularly excited by the striking geology of Staffa. Well, this is the Isle of Staffa, famous for Fingal's Caves. And you can see this wonderful columnar basalt formation, exactly the same as you find in Giant's Causeway. And it's here on this uninhabited island. And it inspired Mendelssohn to uh, write the Hebridean Overture, and in particular, Fingal's Caves. Blocks, aren't they? Bizarre, isn't it? It's like perfectly formed blocks. It's just like a kind of builder's yard of sort of rectangles, isn't it? They head back to Kalani for that most British of institutions, a nice hot cup of tea. Right, how far is it to um, Tyree? Right, this, we're going, the, the wind's veering easterly. Yeah. So the only, it says that nowhere's good on these islands, but it looks like the best place will be, would be in there in Col. Okay, so in that point is. there. Cruising out here, and then in a northwesterly direction, heading this anchorage in Col. I mean, just there is not possible. It's really rocky and really far. I mean, you'd be out in the middle of... Yeah, it's, it's out in the middle of the sea. It yeah. really is. The morning sunshine sees them leaving their anchor off Gometra and heading out to the Isle of Col. The open waters make for a choppy passage. The unspoilt beauty and peaceful tranquility of the island puts everyone in a thoughtful mood. It's just so incredibly sensuous, the way it's sort of moving in the breeze. You know, it's, I don't know, it's like sort of, it's like a fabric, where it's not a fabric, it's grass, but it's just, I mean, look at it, it's so alive and so beautiful.
the remote location has made it a haven for wildlife. The sandy maca is a perfect habitat for hares, skylarks, and the elusive and rare corncrake. Gosh, we've got to get uh, down here. We can't get down there. Yeah, look, at, uh, look at that beach. Derek spots a resident. We do it for you. You live here? Yes. Oh, perfect. Put on that boat out there. Yes, sure. And uh, we're doing this kind of great trip where we're um, following spring, basically, from the Silas right. up to the Hebrides. Mm -hmm. And uh, we haven't really talked to any human beings for a while, so we okay. thought we'd find a human being. Are you local to here? No. Or not really. So this is your piece. I'm a retired chartered accountant, uh -huh. uh, lastly working in London. Uh, but we're from Scotland and um, we bought this house as a holiday house about 10 years ago. We come here from Easter till end of October You're kidding. every That's year. Fantastic. And we're not here every day, but we're here mostly based How here. Fabulous. And in the winter we head for the mainland and we're based uh, near Glasgow. The nuns owned the south part the rest of the island was owned by um, the Maclean's of Duart, um, and they basically lost it, the land. Uh, eventually, they lost the land uh, to a laird. And it was the nuns of Iona, Maclean's of Duart, and then the Duke of Argyle took it over. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, physically, yeah. forcibly Literary. took it over. Yes. Really. Yeah. And the nuns being here. I mean, when when was that mon monastic foundation started in Iona? Was well, it? Iona was about 550 or 490, right. uh, around right. about AD, eight, yeah. eight, uh, six century AD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Saint Columba. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, did the nuns come here because it was not deemed appropriate for the monks and the nuns to be cohabiting on one <laughs> well, island? Well, they didn't or... cohabit, but the nuns were on other islands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't tell you why the nuns came here, but I know yeah. that they well, had to keep them away from the monks, I Probably. guess. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> seems to make sense. Yeah. Well, you're very kind to have given us some okay. of your time. I really appreciate yeah. it. It's time to head back to Kalani. We're looking at a pod of common dolphin. And those are the dolphin with the, what, the white side stripe and white belly. And they love riding bow waves. And here they are, playing like children across the bow wave of the tender at the back. Um, and also up forward on, on, on Kalani. And they're just having great fun. And this is actually quite a large pond. You don't normally see them, because I, I've never seen them in quite this numbers before. I and mean, there must be 30, 40, or even 50 of them around us. And they will ride our bow wave for quite a while until they get bored and move off. But unlike the bottlenose dolphin, there. Um, they actually really always come and ride a by wave. The bottlenose, they might do for a few seconds and then they'll move away. They're not that interesting. The common dolphins particularly seem to love riding by waves.
and as fast as they appeared, they peel away and are lost to sight. As darkness closes around them, they all gather on deck and are treated to the most spectacular Hebridean sunset. Derek grabs his camera, looking once again for that elusive prize. He's not disappointed. It's a spectacular way to end the day. Next time. Jack, I think we'd better buy a house in Scotland. Just forget about it. Jeremy and Derek hike to the interior of the Isle of Rum. Jeremy spots a rare golden eagle. Later, they visit Kinloch Castle. Then on to the coastal cliffs before returning to Killarney. Every year it's getting worse. Every year it seems to be getting worse. But that could be the warming of water. Yeah, well, that's no, what I'm asking, really. It, it, Do you think it's the warming of water? The water is warming. It means that the, the, the wood got away from that. Yeah. The water is warming.